God see you. You are just as stiff necked now as Israel was then. The churches, I want to soak you a little, is just as hard here now as they were then, if not more so. I marvel at Israel hard headedness because they witnessed things none of us did. You probably will get terrified and scared if the whole body of water opened up and separated. You would tremble if you had a cup of orange juice and the orange juice separated. <laughs> orange juice just separated right in front of you. Never mind a sea. But an entire body of water separate. Enemy in back of you. Glory to God and dry land in front of you. God gave them quails and melons and so many things he'd done for them. But just like people are, never satisfied. I have seen this people. Do you hear God talking? Exodus 32 and verse 9. What is it? I have seen this people. I've seen them. And behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Stiff-necked. Stiff-necked. One scripture says you're stiff-necked and uncircumcised of heart and ears. You do all the ways resist the Holy Ghost. Talking in the New Testament, then refer them to the old. He said you do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did. So do ye. Even after Jesus died and rose and ascended above all heavens, the spirit of the people were the same. Hear this. I have seen this people. And what? And behold, it is a stiff-necked people. It's a stiff-necked people. Now, therefore, let me alone. That my, what? Now, therefore, let me alone. Hmm. Hmm. He knew what Moses had in mind. Moses, I know you love these hard head folk, but I got something in mind I want to do to them. And because I know all things, I want to tell you, Let leave me alone before you bother me. <laughs> I'm not even going to wait till you bother me. Just leave me alone. Leave me alone. Now, therefore, let me alone. Let me alone. That my wrath may wax hot again. Let me you. have my way. And that I may consume them. Mm. Can you imagine getting God that angry? If God consume you, that means he got to a point where he was willing to make you non-existent. You know, if your body is consumed in the flames, there's nothing left. You are non-existent. Hear me good, you that are here, you that are listening. Now think of it. The scripture says God is long suffering to us, very tolerant, very patient. So, how could a people push the emotions of God so great until God wants to wipe your existence off the earth? How could you take God's patience and push him until he is willing to consume you off the face of the earth? That's something to think about. That's right. Because it ain't nothing and nobody more patient than God. <laughs> That's right. God is the perfect and fallible example of patience. Listen. Now, therefore, let me alone. Let me alone. That my wrath may wax hot against my them. My wrath may have its way. And that I may consume them. That I may consume them. And I will make of thee a great nation. And Moses besought God, the Lord his God. God ain't stuck. No. He said, I make of thee, of thee a great nation. He can take away one and bring another. Right. That's the Lord's doing. That's right. If someone... Leave the truth, God will bring in many to replace that one. That's right. If a preacher leave, God will bring some more. That's right. Everybody, hear me good.
can be replaced. Did you hear what I said? Someone said, Pastor Jennings, does that include you? Why, certainly. Moses died. Come on, Joshua. As I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. What but, more can you ask? Here, but, here. Judas died. Come on, Matthias. Everybody can be replaced. Why well, you listen to what I'm telling you? Listen good now. Psalm 75 and verse 6. Yes. Psalm 75 and verse 7. What is it? But God is the judge. God is the judge. He putteth he down one. Put down one. And setteth up another. And he can do it to anybody, anytime. All right, let's go back to where you were. Let's finish up. Back in Exodus chapter 32 and verse 10. Follow me. Now therefore let me alone. Let me alone. That my wrath may wax hot against them. That my them. wrath may wax hot against them. And that I may consume them. That I may consume them. And I will make of thee a great nation. Yes. And Moses besought the Moses Lord his God. Moses besought the Lord his God. And said, Lord, why doeth thy wrath wax hot against thy people? Yes. Which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power. And, and with a mighty hand. Yes. Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say... For the, mischief. You, listen, you're going to give the Egyptians something to talk about. If you do what you got in mind, they're going to talk about you, Lord. That's right. That's right. Moses, you know, that's a beautiful thing. When you got such a relationship with the creator of the universe, you can have dialogue with him. That's right. I mean, direct. That's right. I might have said, God is too great to talk to man. He ain't never told you that. No. No, he, never said. he talked to the prophets. Don't you hear the prophets saying, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. What? And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. Wouldn't you like to have a relationship like that with you and God? As a man speaketh unto his friend. Wait a minute. How was Moses and God relationship? As a man speaking. Read the whole thing. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. And the Lord spake to Moses face to face. And how was the camaraderie going on? As a man. As a man. Speaketh unto his friend. Talk to a friend. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. As a man speaketh. Speak his feet unto his friend. To a friend. That's right. You know, you can read what Moses said to God, that's right. but that don't mean your relationship with God, you can say it to him. That's true. I'll show you what I mean. Let's get the dialogue between Moses and God. Come back on, in, son. Back in Exodus 32 and verse 11. Follow me. And Moses besought the Lord his God. And said, Lord, why doeth thy wrath wax hot against why thy people? Why are you angry with your people? Which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt. Yes. With great power and with a mighty hand. Uh -huh. Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say. If you do what you got in mind, you're going to give the Egyptians something to talk about. And they're going to talk about you, Lord. For, for mischief did he bring them out. Wait a minute. They're going to blame you for mischievous conduct. That's right. They're going to blame you, Lord, for mischievous conduct. For mischief did for he bring mischief. them out. They're going to say for mischief, you brought them out. To slay them in the mountain. You just brought them out to kill them. And to consume them from Another the face word, of the they're earth. Gonna, if you do what you got in mind, they're going to misinterpret what you've done and say you've done something, they're going to lie on you. That's right. That's Don't right. give them a reason to lie on you, Lord. That's right. Glory to God. That's right. Hear this. Turn from thy fierce wrath. What? Turn from thy fierce wrath. He's talking to the Lord now. Mm. The same I am that I am. The great Jehovah. He's talking to your Lord. <laughs> That's right. Same one that made heaven and earth and the sea and all things therein. Right. He's telling the Lord. Turn. From thy fear. Turn. Change your mind. Hmm. 
Wait a minute, Pastor Dennis. How in the world can God turn? He said, I'm a God that changed not. For this cause, uh, Jacob won't be consumed. God can change. Yes, he can. But he don't change from being God. Right. <laughs> That's it. Moses said to God, do what? Turn from thy fierce wrath. Turn. When you turn, that means change. Turn from your fierce wrath. And repent. What? And repent. Be sorry. Of this evil against thy people. Show compassion. I want you to turn. And not only am I asking you to turn, I'm asking you to repent. repent. Show remorse of how you feel. Let's see about their relationship, how good do they get along. I'll say, where you at? What happened? Remember Abraham, Isaac, Lord, and Israel. Lord, I'm not done talking. Remember. You know all things, but I want you to reflect. Israel didn't just pop up. You don't want to make promises. Before you formed the people, you made promises. Remember Abraham, hey, Isaac, Lord, and Israel. Do you remember Abraham? You know, the one that you lay circumcision law to? Do you know Isaac? Isaac. Do you not know Jacob? Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's Israel. Thy servants. Your servants. To whom thou swearest by thy you own self. You made a pact. Glory to God. <laughs> you made an agreement. You made a contract. You made a promise. You made an oath. To whom thou swearest by thine own self. You sweared by your own self. And saidest unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. You complain about the people, but you told them. I will multiply your you, seed. You, that you're going to multiply the seed. As the stars of heaven. going to be so many, it's going to be like the stars of heaven. And all this land that I have spoken. All this land that I spoke to you. I will give unto I'm your seed. Give it to the people. And they shall inherit it forever. They're going to inherit it forever. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. He turned. Hallelujah. He didn't change from being God. But that's the relationship between Moses and God. It's like a man talk to his friend. To his friend. Mine, can you imagine to be so close oh. and on good terms with the Lord? Hallelujah. That when you talk to him, your relationship is so well mm. that he knows you will never turn on him. That's right. Imagine God have enough confidence in you that he know regardless of what he allowed to happen, you won't turn on him. That's right. Hallelujah. Glory to God, you'll be committed to him down to the last breath of your body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the relationship with Moses and God was wonderful. Moses was up on a mountain and Israel in their thinking Moses was gone just too long. And when the people saw that Moses delayed give chapter and verse Exodus chapter 32 and now we're at verse 1. Hear this. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount. You know some folk can't wait till you're gone. It's like some children. They can't wait till mama or daddy is gone before they tear the house out. <laughs> That's right. Sneak friends in the house, sneak them in there to spend the night, sneak to have a house party, bring stuff in the house that they wouldn't dare bring if their parents was there. That's the way it is in church today. That's true. In their mind, Jesus is delaying too long to come back. And because he didn't come back yet, look at the amount of garbage and trash that have came in churches around the world. Because they feel as though the Lord is taking so long until some concluded that the coming back of the Lord 
is a long-term myth. Knowing this first, hear this in the book of Second Peter, chapter three and verse three. Let's get Bible for the way that people thought then, and the same thought is now centered around the coming of the Lord. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers. What? That there shall come in the last days scoffers. These are the last days here, and the Bible is giving us a heads up. Knowing this first, I want you to know this first that shall come in the last days. Scoffers, scoffers, walking after their own lust, walking after their own lust, their own opinion, their own logic, and saying, "Where is the this promise is of his coming?" Say, Where, Where is the promise? I told you, right. is the promise of his coming, of his coming. For since the fathers fell asleep, since our fathers died, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Do you hear? And this is the New Testament, and people thought like this. That's right. And people are saying it now. Where is the promise of the coming? Have you ever met people? Oh, you tell them the Lord is coming. You know what they say? Oh man, my mother and father. I've been hearing that since I was a child. I don't believe that no more. That's what they say. I've been hearing that since I was a child. I don't believe that no more. Even preachers have turned against the coming of the Lord. That's right. But the Lord saw the way you thought, knowing this first, and saw the way you will think. That's right. And He had it documented, so when your foolish heart come along, He already got a catalog in the Book of Truth. That's right. Do you hear it? Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers. There shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust. Walking after their own lust mean going after their own opinion, their own way of thinking. And saying, saying, "Where is the promise of His coming?" This is the way many of you think that are watching. That's right. Oh, my mama told me about Jesus coming. I don't believe that no more. That's right. That's right. Things are still. If Jesus is coming, why the world like it is? Nothing have changed. That's right. I don't believe that. That's right. God is so wise. He knew you would think that way. Amen. So He put it in the mirror. <laughs> That's right. So when you read this scripture, viewer, you see the reflection of your own self. That's right. All of you that think this way, this was written thousands of years. Glory to God on high. That's right. Before you were born. So when you come. That's right. This is your mirror. That's right. This is the reflection of how foolish you think. Amen. And this is the reflection of how you feel. And saying, "Where?" And this is the reflection of how you are. That's right. Saying, "Where is the promise of His coming?" Where is the promise of the coming of Christ? Where is that promise at? For since the fathers fell asleep, that the fathers been dead, all things continue as they the were from the beginning of the creation. From the beginning of creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of. Ah, uh, notice. Focus on the language of the scriptures. For this, this is a different kind of ignorance. That's right. That's right. It isn't that they really were ignorant. This was a false ignorance. For the Bible says, "For this, they willingly are ignorant of." What you mean, willingly? Street terms play the dumb role. That's right. In other words, you know better because you know the information is right. But the reason why we're complaining about where is this coming is because in our mind he should have been here. That's right. Who are we to say when the Lord should come? That's right. That's right. Viewers, God's delay is for your mercy. That's right. Jesus delay is an act of mercy. The longer he take, the more time we have to clean up our spots, hallelujah, our wrinkles, to correct our crooked ways. You that are watering down. The second coming of Christ, and that's what it is. He came as an act of mercy to die in the flesh for us. This time, His coming is an act of mercy and judgment. 
to save those out of this present evil world that would obey his precepts and to bring eternal punishment to those that have rejected his precepts. So you that are ignorantly, willingly ignorant. This they thou willingly are ignorant of. They are willingly ignorant of. That by the word of God the heavens were of old. By the word of God the, the heavens were of old. And the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Hold it. How can the earth be in water, out of water. and out of water? How can that happen at the same time? Are you listening? And the days of, Mo, of Noah, when Noah obeyed God and they was in the ark, the earth was in the water and out of the water at the same time. When it was out of the water, someone say, how is that, Pastor Jenny? The earth was covered. The whole earth was underwater. Land and the human family and the animal, the beast, all that didn't go into the ark was in the water. Flesh is earth. Noah, his household, and the beasts that went into the ark, they were out of the water because they are earth. So the earth that was living was them that was in the ark. That's when earth was out of the water. The earth that perished, which ceased to live, that's when earth was in the water. Are you listening? What is it? Whereby the world that then was. The world that then was. Being overflowed with water perished. Being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth which are now. But the heavens and the earth which are now. By the same by word. By that same word. Are kept in store. Are kept in store reserved, reserved unto, unto fire what reserved unto fire he ain't gonna destroy the world with the flood no more reserved unto fire what against the day of judgment he didn't say it won't be no more floods but the whole earth won't be destroyed with water no more that's right something worse is coming reserved unto fire Against Notice the language of the scriptures. It says by the same word. But the heavens and the earth which are now. What? By the same word. Hold it. Noah preached along with Methuselah. God gave man 120 years to get himself right. Man wouldn't do it. So here you had a message given to the servants of the Lord that they may have clear time to prepare themselves to escape the judgment of God. As it was in Noah's day, so shall it be when the Son of Man come. God is sending men. And he's given the men that he sends the same, same. message. That's right. Warning the world that same word. Same word. Did you hear what he said? But the heavens and the earth which are now. Which are now. By the same word. By the same. Hallelujah. By the same word. Are kept in store. Are kept in store. Reserved. The word of the Lord got heaven and earth in reserve. Reserved. For fire. Reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Do you hear this? But beloved, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. Now, viewers, and you that are here, let's go back to Moses in Exodus. Back in Exodus chapter 32. I want to get all of that and show verse you one. a clearer picture of the stage of their whole religious world. That's right. Listen good. Back in Exodus chapter 32 and verse 1. All right. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, yes. the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron. And what? And said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before uh, us. Aaron, Moses is taking too long. Notice, they went to his kin. That's right. That's what you do, Bishop. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, make good. Go ahead. You that are here, have you ever been in a church? that had some solid standards. And the father was about to die, the old bishop. 
And besides trying to see who's qualified, his focus was leave the church to his children. So old man Bishop died, That's right. and the son took over. And when the son took over, now you can't even recognize the place to even be called a church. That's right. Am I right, I said? That's right. You bishops that do this, you're more focused on keeping your name as a legacy. And where you should be focused on the people's souls being saved. Many have come to me, Pastor Jennings, which one of your sons is going to take over after you? None. <laughs> That's right. None, I said. That's right. That's right. This is not the church of Jennings. Right. This is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. You sit around and wait on none of my sons. <laughs> That's right. If any of my sons wanted to minister, they would have to go through the same process. Amen. Go before the evaluation board. What my son like telling them, I'm Pastor Jenny's son. I wouldn't care if you Gabriel's first cousin, if possible. Amen. And I would expect that evaluation team to be just as vigorous and brutal. Don't look at his name. That's right. That's right. But my son up as a preacher ain't no favor to the church. That's right. It is qualification that helps the church. That's where you preachers failed. And many of you that are watching, you don't even recognize the church you're in. It used to be apostolic. Now, you don't know what it is. You don't baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. Now you claim you got the Holy Ghost without speaking in tongues. Now the women preachers are taking over the churches. Your bishop that died used to didn't ordain women, but his no good, rotten, spoiled brat son <laughs> done now ordained his wife. That's right. Am I right? Amen. Are you listening? That's right. So Israel changed That's right. at the absence of Moses. Not that Moses was dead. Hear this. And if you need That's right. the minister or overseer to always be in your presence just to do right, you ought to go to hell. That's right. Flesh die, but the word abideth forever. And you should not need a minister standing in front of you just for you to live right. For before he came in the ministry, the word was here. If you need Pastor Jennings to be in your temple for you to obey the scriptures, you are looking at me too much, too much. and you are an exalted me too high. That's right. If you have the mentality, I ain't coming to church until Pastor Jennings come here. You are lost. Yes. I'm not your God. You supposed to be waiting for the coming of the Christ. And I am
am not he. Our job as ministers is to point you. Point you to Christ. And the word of God brings you to him. I'm going to lay out of the church till Pastor Jen has come. All you doing is acting out what will happen if I die. Then that means you ain't coming at all. If you think that's giving me support, that's right. you're thinking wrong. Amen. Because I can't stop preaching and stop going if I don't see you. So when did you get the luxury that you can say, I ain't going to church to Pastor Jennings get here. This is about your relationship with you and God. Talk back to me. That's right. What happened here? And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount. When people saw that Moses delayed, delayed to come down out of the mount. In their mind, he should have been back. They had no idea. Glory to God, what great work the Lord was performing for Moses for the betterment of the people. That's right. Listen. The people gathered themselves together unto Aaron. Wait a minute. They got somebody less qualified. That's right. And the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, get up. Make us gods which shall go before us. We want you to do what Moses won't. For as for this Moses. For this Moses. The man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt. Oh, we give honor. You know, he brought us out of bondage. But this is how we feel about him. We want not what has become of him. We don't know what happened to him and we don't care. That's right. That's right. Mm. That's exactly the way some of you preachers are. Been taught the truth. Amen. But make it up in your mind, I'm going to do what I want to do. That's right. That's exactly the way some folk that come to church today. That's right. Many of you repented, was baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ and got baptized because you found out your baptism was wrong. You ain't got baptized, came out the water, went straight back to falsehood. And when you go to hell, it'll be just like you never obeyed baptism. That's right. Glory to God. For as for this Moses, as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, that brought us out of bondage, we want not what has become of him. We don't know what happened to him. And Aaron said unto them, What did Aaron say? Break off the golden earrings. Oh, now, if the people didn't know what was in Aaron, they would never went to him. That's true. Notice. That's true. They ain't come to Joshua with that stuff. No. Take this under consideration. When people in your temples can pull you aside and dog and run down your other fellow minister and you don't retaliate and put them in check, ask yourself, what 
are you showing them that make them see oh I can come to him and dog Jones I can come to him and dog Robinson I can come to him and dog Lodge That's what right. is it about you you have gotten too close to that brother or to that sister that's right that's right there should not be an Aaron among you that's right there will always be errands but I refuse to be one amen because if I betrayed you, I betrayed Jesus. For Jesus said, what you do to my least ones, you do unto me. Are you listening? The people gathered themselves together unto Aaron. The people gathered themselves unto Aaron. And said unto him, up, make us gods. Hold it! This is what the people do today. They pull Aaron aside. Look, man, why don't you start your own church? That's right. I'm with you. Yeah. I got your back. Yeah. As a Jennings and the others, just holding you back. That's you right. got the anointing. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> you shaking and he's gone. <laughs> That's right. So your friends put you in the pulpit. Right then, doomed for failure. Doomed. That's right. Because of you up here, because of friends, and not by biblical permission, you gonna have to always in your ministry cater and please your friends. That's right. And the moment you preach something that they don't like, they gonna jump on you. And if they know anything personal about you, and you don't confide it in them, they're going to blackmail you. That's right. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? That's right. It is good. It is good. The people gathered themselves together unto Aaron. Many of you preachers are watching now. You know better. But there are things you will not preach against because the members in your congregation is in blackmail position. You should never got to issue out money to keep somebody quiet. Nobody, nowhere. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Because once you start issuing out money to keep him quiet or her quiet, that means they are in control. And when they are in control, that means they are in control of your so-called sermons. That's right. Why are you listening to the old man? The people gathered themselves the together unto Aaron. Gathered themselves unto Aaron. Unto Aaron. And said unto him, Up. Get up. Make us gods which shall go before us. Now we know Moses declared, We know it's one God. Because it was said to us, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. But we're dissatisfied with that one God teaching now. That's right. We want something else. Up, make us gods. And we know you just like us. That's right. That's right. We ain't going to Joshua. He's somewhere at the foot of the mountain waiting for Moses to come back. You know, he's just too spiritual for us. <laughs> That's right. He still believes Moses is going to come back. He's just too spiritual. But Aaron. Aaron. You got the same spirit we have. Yeah. You're double-minded like us. Even though you are priests. If you bear in mind, Aaron was the high priest. And his sons were priests under him. Ithamar, Eleazar, Nadab, and Abihu. Their very priestly garments was designed by the Lord himself. The priest gave attendance at the altar. Are you listening? So they didn't come to Aaron because they didn't see what's in him. That's right. They saw the vulnerability that was in him and he was a people pleaser. That's right. Moses was strict. Yeah. Moses firm. Moses.
Moses, Jehovah this, Jehovah that. I am that I am. God this. God. Oh, man, he was all about God. That's right. Aaron, more laid back. More people pleaser. Full of wickedness. Yeah. And he was not loyal. That's right. He betrayed his overseer. He betrayed his blood brother. And more importantly, he betrayed God. Amen. Listen. The people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. Wait a minute. Make us what? Make us gods. Tell that. G-O-D-S. That's what happened to many of you out there who've been taught there's one God. You went and got some scrub. <laughs> That's right. You went and got a smurf. That's right. And made Papa Smurf some old homemade preacher. That's right. And now these Smurfs has made gods, God's plural, for you. That's right. Who've been taught there was one. How many is denouncing the one true living God for people? That's true. I wouldn't denounce, hallelujah, there was one God if he was going to put me in the electric chair. No. You can take the voltage and connect it to the voltage of the third rail <laughs> of a railway. <laughs> Let me fry believing in one God. That's right. And if it's God will that I feel the pain and I'm hollering, let me be hollering. What? Just shaking. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me shake it out. Pull the lever. Whoa, just shake it out. Hallelujah. Being a child of God is way beyond coming to wish up. He demands loyalty, commitment. He's against it. He abhor betrayal. betrayal. Listen. The people gathered themselves together unto Aaron. And what? And said unto him, up, make us gods which shall go before make us. Make us gods. To go before us. For as for this Moses, for this Moses, the man that brought us out up out of, the land of Egypt, us out the land of Egypt, we want not what has become of him. My viewers, did you have a preacher, by God's permission, preach enough to make you consider to turn your ways and preach you out of sin? And now the one that did that is dead. And now look at your church. It look like a club, a disco joint. <laughs> Half naked women, half naked men. You don't know who is the man or who is the woman. You That's up right. on choir rehearsal, the women come to choir rehearsal with pants and shorts and halters. That's men right. come to choir rehearsal, pants hanging down, showing his drawers. Amen. In choir rehearsal with a hat on, a man up there practicing in a choir with all these long dreadlocks and got your hair looking like buckwheat. That's right. That's right. Because Israel, out of control, wicked, God saw commandments to be a necessity. That's right. These commandments wasn't written to decorate stone. They were written that the people conduct may be put in order. Yeah. Hear this. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, what is it? we want not we what has become of what him. What happened to him? And Aaron said unto them, Aaron said to them, Break off the golden earrings. Oh, you select me? Oh, I know how to get you in hell. Hmm. I know how to make you sin. That's right. I know how to make you rebel. Yeah. Get you, you want a God? Okay. Break off the golden Get, earrings. Take your earrings off. Which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters.